Hello, my name is Dr. Eve Landry, and I'm a second year critical care fellow here at Western University. And this screencast is entitled Pleural Effusion and Consolidation Size Pneumonia versus Compressive Atelectasis. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge Dr. Vincent Lau, who helped with this presentation and is currently doing a critical care ultrasound fellowship here at Western University. I would also like to acknowledge Dr. Rob Arnfield, who is the champion of critical care ultrasound here at Western. Through this screencast, I hope to give you the tools required to interpret a consolidation with an adjacent pleural effusion as being either pneumonia with paranemonic effusion or primary effusion with compressive atelectasis. Let's begin with a case. You are presented with an 89-year-old female who is admitted to hospital with increased shortness of breath, cough, and sputum. The working diagnosis is possible pneumonia. The presentation was quite severe as she required intubation secondary to hypoxemic respiratory failure. When we look at the chest x-ray, there is potential bilateral pneumonia present along with potential bilateral pleural effusions. Of course, because the radiologist is not at the bedside, there was the added phrase clinical correlation required, which is not uncommon. The team decides to go ahead and start antibiotics, but the underlying question was whether or not this patient requires urgent chest drainage. At this point, before we proceed to any video clips, we would like to arm you with the proper approach to the identification of pleural effusions as well as to proper image interpretation. First and foremost, it's important to select the proper probe, the phased array probe, which is the same transducer you would use for all of your lung ultrasound studies. In the supine patient, scanning begins in the posterior axillary line and essentially what you're trying to do is identify the following anatomic boundaries the diaphragm, the subdiaphragmatic organs, so either the liver or the spleen, the chest wall, and the lung. Encompassed by these boundaries, you're looking for an anechoic space. And the true definition of a pleural fusion is a relatively anechoic space surrounded by typical anatomic boundaries. You also want to identify dynamic changes seen within the pleural fluid. You will often see typical lung movement in the pleural fusion swaying back and forth, and this is often termed lung flapping or the jellyfish sign. You also want to comment on diaphragmatic movements that you may see. Let's now move on to the interpretation of lung ultrasound images. Looking at the top left corner of the screen, we see the L4 label, representing the left plaps view. As I activate the video, the next step is to obtain proper orientation and to identify important anatomic structures. Here we can see chest wall, diaphragm, along with its associated subdiaphragmatic structure, which in this case is the spleen, an anechoic space, as well as clearly consolidated or hepatized lung. Thus, by definition, we can call this anechoic space a pleural effusion. Looking back at the lung itself, we can clearly see static air bronchograms as well as dynamic air bronchograms, which actually represent air bubbles freely moving through the patent airways with respiration. Overall, this is demonstrative of consolidated lung due to pneumonia as the primary process with a secondary small paranemonic pleural effusion. We can make this conclusion given that there is a much greater degree of lung consolidation as compared to the size of the pleural effusion, which is small. On this next image clip, we again see that we are dealing with the left plaps view. As I activate the image, again we can clearly define chest wall, diaphragm, spleen, consolidated lung, and moderate sized anechoic space, which by definition is a pleural effusion. There are perhaps some static air bronchograms, although it is less clear given the amount of gain on this uh, image clip. As our consolidation and pleural fusion are both of moderate size, it becomes uh, somewhat more difficult to uh, determine which is the primary process. Therefore, we can utilize some secondary findings and characteristics to help us make our decision. Looking at the pleural fusion itself, we can actually see these heterogeneous floating structures through the effusion. They are hyperechoic, and this actually refers to the plankton sign, indicating a complex pleural fusion 
is being assessed. So to put this all into context, we have a similar sized consolidated lung compared to a similar sized pleural effusion with evidence of complexity. This again would support lung consolidation due to pneumonia as being the primary process with a secondary complex pleural effusion. An important learning point here is that this effusion certainly needs to be drained on an urgent basis. So far, we've seen a couple of nice examples of secondary pleural fusions due to a primary lung pathology such as pneumonia. Now let's take a look at secondary lung consolidation, otherwise known as compressive atelectasis, in the setting of a large pleural effusion. In this image, we are seeing a left costophrenic view. And as I activate the video, again we see chest wall, diaphragm, spleen, large anechoic space with atelectatic lung and an interesting sign known as the jellyfish sign here which looks like a wagging tail and represents the distal segment of atelectatic lung. Now in this case we see quite a large pleural fusion compared to a small compressed atelectatic lung. So therefore, the diagnosis is a large pleural effusion with secondary compressive atelectasis. Hopefully at this point, you're starting to catch on that comparing the volume of lung consolidation to the volume of pleural effusion can be helpful in confirming your diagnosis of primary and secondary lung processes. When you are presented with lung consolidation that is of similar volume to the pleural effusion, it is helpful to look at the secondary characteristics. This is another great example of dynamic air bronchograms, as we do see air traveling freely through the airways during respiration. This clinical feature is important as it helps us to rule out compressive atelectasis. In the setting of compressive atelectasis, we would expect the airways to be collapsed, and we would expect not to see air bronchograms. Apart from the qualitative eyeball method used to estimate the size of a pleural effusion, it is also possible to estimate its size quantitatively by using a simple calculation. The volume of a pleural effusion is equal to 200 milliliters per centimeter multiplied by the caliper distance between the inferior edge of the lung and the superior edge of the diaphragm in centimeters. So in the case above, it would be 3.82 centimeters multiplied by 200 milliliters per centimeter, giving a total estimated volume of 760 milliliters. In summary, I hope you can better appreciate that ultrasound, lung consolidation patterns, and pleural effusions coexist and pose a very common clinical question as to what the true diagnosis may be. So, if you are presented with a small pleural effusion, which is much smaller than the lung consolidation size, we can make a diagnosis of pneumonia with paranemonic effusion. On the other hand, if you do see a large pleural fusion, which is greater in size compared to the consolidation, then you can diagnose a large pleural fusion with compressive atelectasis. If on ultrasound you see a moderate pleural fusion, which is approximately equal in size to the volume of the consolidation, there are a couple of possible diagnoses and it really does depend on the patient's clinical presentation. If your patient is presenting with an elevated white count, fever, as well as the presence of static and dynamic air bronchograms on ultrasound, or evidence of complexity, such as a positive plankton sign, then the diagnosis is most likely pneumonia with a moderate paranemonic effusion. On the other hand, if your patient is clinically doing quite well with no fever or increased white count, and ultrasonographically there's an absence of air bronchograms or plankton sign, you can make a diagnosis of moderate pleural effusion with compressive atelectasis. Thanks once again for joining us at westernsono.ca. Please check out the citations for Jordan A. Al from Pierre Corey's group for their work with pleural effusions and their relative size to the volume of consolidation mm -hmm. to help with differentiating between primary and secondary lung processes.
We'd also encourage you to check out the citation for Dr. Daniel Lichtenstein, AL, for their work regarding dynamic air bronchograms and helping to differentiate alveolar consolidation caused by pneumonia versus atelectasis. Please check out westernsono.ca for all of your critical care ultrasound needs. We hope that you join us again in the future. Thank you.